everybody, we are J K pop. No, 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 no. still no, still no, still no. After Hello. all this time, after all this time. <laughs> Anyways, hello everybody. We are actually back. So sorry for the um absence, the pause, the pause, the absence, the pause. It'd be like that. But yeah, um, we had a lot of stuff going on. You know, the C word happened. COVID. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, we stopped because I got surgery, and then we moved like immediately afterward, basically, mm-hmm. and then we got COVID. And now we're back. Yeah, it's been a crazy few months to say the least. But like Jordy said, we moved. We are in this beautiful new house that we are so excited to be filming different stuff in. The current pandemic hit our household, um, but we are okay now. Thank goodness. So yes, we are back thriving and ready to talk about and better than ever. And specifically today, we are doing an in-depth analysis of, drum roll please, <gasps> Kingdom the Legendary War. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, also, I'm Emily. Oh, I'm Abby. And I'm Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. We have a brand new idol oh. that's oh. going to be joining us. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hey, baby. We will have um, special guests uh, quite a bit in the form of six cats that we own with our roommates. If you guys don't remember, this is Conehead. He's finally released. We will be talking about Kingdom Legendary War, but specifically we will be going through like an in-depth analysis of each one of the groups. And today we will be starting off with two groups and it's the two groups that performed the second part of No Limit. Yes. And so we're going to do we're going to do. We're going to go through all of their performances from the very beginning, starting with their 100 second performance. <laughs> Stop looking at the fan. What are you doing? He likes looking at the fan. He's so cute. He's really cute. But yeah, so we'll be looking at the 100 second performance all the way up to the no limit. Yes. Second performance. And we will be, thank you, Monte. We will be breaking, Hi, baby. we will be breaking down uh, Mayfly and it's I'm, it's one, one I'm one. It's one. It's one. one. We will be breaking them, their groups down Mm -hmm. as well with Mm -hmm. their performances, but we will only be focusing on Stray Kids and Icon. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, we will be starting off with Rhythm Ta Icon introduction stage. What did you guys think? Wait, that was the first one, right? Yes, that was their introduction. Their intro. I think it was one of their strongest performances, honestly. It was really, really good. It was different. It was very different. Like, all of them had a hip-hop style, but that one was very different in its way, if that makes sense. I definitely think they were the cleanest for that one. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not know Icon except for Bobby. I think he's the cutest little thing in the entire universe. Like, so precious. Like, he was so smiley and so happy. And, like, I don't know. I thought it was a really good introduction stage. Like, You can't really take the introduction stages too, too seriously, but I definitely do think it was a very strong performance and possibly one of their strongest performances to date. So what did you think about the performance? I mean, I thought it was good. I think that, again, it's hard to really be able to judge a 100 second thing, but I think for the time that they were given and what they decided to do with it, I think overall was a really, really strong performance. At the end of that show, Icon had impressed us, despite the fact that we went in not really knowing that group. So I thought it was a good time. Yes. So as an introduction stage, what would you give it? One out of five. Don't think about any of the other groups. Just them just themselves. Them. I mean, a four. four. I think it was solid. Solid yeah, four. 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 Like it was entertaining. And so now we are going to the next performance that they had right after, which was Love Scenario, the Love Scenario medley. And it was To the World, which is a top hit song or two songs rearranged and different from their usual stages. And so they did Love Scenario and then they did Killing me? Killing me. Killing me. Yes. Mm. All right. And so what did you two think about that? I thought that it was good. Um, I thought that it started off the strong, like the song or the show really, really strong as like the first actual competition mm-hmm. piece. You're going to see as we talk about Icon that I have a very particular disdain for things in a song. And that is unnecessary, in my opinion, chanting. And so they did that at the, at the end of this of this one. And I thought... They do it in a lot of their performances. I actually noticed as we watched like all of them, but this was the first one where they did that. And they just, they, they get into this thing where they do that chanting and then they just jump around with no choreography. And it just seems like it comes almost out of nowhere. 
after they've done strict choreography throughout the entire performance. But besides that, it was a really, really good performance. It was very entertaining for me, and I loved the mashup. I thought that it was done really, really well. Bobby and Mino did great. <laughs> me. <laughs> I really liked the actual musical production of that song. It was a good mashup. Like, it's one that you didn't expect. It had a very, like, musical feeling to the first one, and then mm -hmm. you immediately clash that against like a darker more like hip-hop heavy song and that really gave it character and dimension but i didn't really care for the actual like performance performance Fair. It i feel like i could have watched it on like mmt or inkagaya or something like that like it genuinely felt like an award stage and i was like well they did really good in that sense but this is kind of more of like a competition I figured it was going to be a little bit more challenging for them, a little bit different than what they usually do. And from like previous ones that I've watched, it seemed very icon, if that makes sense. Very like yeah. I'm at an award show. So it was, it showed that they are very talented and especially musically. In comparison to everyone else, it felt like a performance I could have got anywhere else. That's fair. But it wasn't bad. It was really, it was one of my favorites of that night, genuinely. But like, that was my only complaint about yeah. it. it. But it was solid. It was really, really solid. And I think they should have placed a lot higher than what they did. Yeah. What do you think, Em? Um, I agree with both of you. Like, I think the performance itself was really lacking. I really liked the remixes of the song. Dancing was fun. Um, sorry, I'm just reading off of my notes. But I think, like, I'm going to go along with what you guys said, that definitely it was a very safe performance. It's something that you would see at an award show. It's not really something you would see at a competition, considering that you're going up against so many people, like, not there wasn't anything special and i don't mean like crazy acrobatics i'm not talking about anything like that like there just wasn't anything memorable about the performance and i think that's something very important for all the groups to have is to be memorable every mm -hmm. single time to the world is not really like a that's, challenge yeah. like you're telling them okay take one of your songs and remix it and i'm just that's that's not a challenge you're not challenging them to do anything at all also it was really i'm so sorry i was just gonna say it's really weird that they had the 100 second performance which was the introduction stage which was their own song they could do whatever they want they didn't really tell them to do anything but then they had them do their own song again like like why are you gonna just you know what i mean like why are you going through the discography like that like just change it up do something different you know yeah it was very the show itself is very much lacking like actual challenges it genuinely feels like they're just catering to the fact that they have so many legends on there where it's like oh well you're comfortable in this and this is what people like no i want to see these legends be pushed mm -hmm. because they're legends they're supposed to be the best of the best in the business prove it yeah i'm with you but going back to what you were saying before, the whole like chanting thing, I completely forgot about it. I don't like that in performances in, in general. Like that's not, like it's, I feel like it's cheap. The problem for me is that if it's well done, it's well done. But if it's not, it sounds weird. And one of theirs, the, other, the one that we'll get to later, I will also bring it up because that one was really, really bad for me. This one wasn't bad, but it started the... It, it started the sequence of them doing it in almost every single performance, and that's what really made me realize how often they do it. I just have an awful disdain for, like, choreographed chaos because in high school, one of my performances was the beginning of the song we had to do choreographed chaos, and yeah. that's where we would lose most of the points because you can't choreograph chaos. It doesn't look chaos. good. No, it, yeah. it looks awkward. It looks out of place, and that's always been a thing that I really, really hate. Like, don't choreograph chaos. It looks messy yeah no i agree but overall icon is good like they have they had solid vocals they like, o they're always so solid and then i well, feel like they like leave the end well I, I will complain about one thing though with icon love icon love them to bits but i do if you're gonna be on a competition stage i don't like seeing so much lip syncing i'm not gonna lie like that does it drives me insane where i'm like lip sync at the mamas lip sync at like the promotion tour whatever i don't care but like if you're at a competition showing off your skills be live like how can i prove that you're going to be the best of the best if you're just going to be mouthing over the words that you sang as we saw with other con contestants mm -hmm. that sometimes the recording is much better than them in real life that's fair and like if you can't do it live 
then uh, you're going to lose points. And so it's really hard to judge them vocally because vocally they sounded really, really good, but also it was pre-recorded and they weren't doing it live. Not everybody. Like I definitely don't think everybody was lip syncing. Like Bobby never lip syncs his raps, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, when he puts the mic down and stuff, but that's another nitpicky thing about, about it where it's like competition be live. Yeah. It's very fair. And also I'm probably should have put this at the, at the beginning, but it's okay. We're here now. Just a big disclaimer. All six of these groups, we have come, if we didn't know them before, we have come to really appreciate and love them. And if we knew and loved them before, we still love them. We are going to critique all six of them though. So please know that no group is safe, but we say all of this with still love in our hearts for all of them. So please, if you disagree with one of our, with one of our details or something that we say, that's okay. We are allowed to have a difference of opinions and you are welcome to comment down below about your opinion and what you think, as long as you are kind and polite, any mean or unnecessary comments will be deleted and we will not be engaging in them just so you are very, very aware. But again, we love these groups and we want to talk about it, but we will be critiquing them. And if that's not something you can handle, then this might not be the video for you. Also, another little disclaimer, me and Abby were really a part of like show choir and stuff. So we kind of know about performance and stuff. Jordy was also a part of um, band and stuff like that. He is also a producer, so he's going to be. So we kind of we kind of have like some, you know, uh, what is that thing? A called? little a little bit of expertise, a little, a little bit, bit of, of like, yeah. we have some techniques. We all are very um, rehearsed. Yeah, in, oh, absolutely. In performing yeah. or performance, maybe not the same thing, but like definitely not very K-pop close. style. But <laughs> yeah, no, 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 never. No. But like we we've got some background. So please know we're not just kind of like talking out of our asses. We have some things and there will be some that are genuinely just opinions that we have no background on. And that's OK. We all have opinions and we just decided we want to voice them. But some of these things we do have real technical like expertise on. Yeah, definitely. I cannot tell you about anything about choreography. I'm like, it looked good. It looked bad. So out of one out of five stars for the Icon um, Love Scenario Medley, what would you give it? I'd still give it a four. Four? It was really entertaining. Yeah, I would agree. I I genuinely think this one and the one before were some of their strongest. So I would definitely still say four for this. I would say three and a half. And not because I think the performance itself is bad, but it's because if you did not improve from the week before, Mm. you are not... Mm. Like if you're not improving, you're what's the, disimproving. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're staying stagnant. <laughs> you're you're no, stagnant. No, but not only just like if you're staying stagnant, like that means you're failing. Like, yeah. and I'm not trying to be mean. I really do love Icon. Like, especially nowadays, I really do love them. But like, you need to get better every single week. You're right. So that was. So yeah, like I said, a three and a half for me. You're right. You're right. All right. Inception Icon, which was the first challenge, and I think it was probably my favorite challenge out of all of them. And so it was reborn, which means you were exchanging songs and rearranging them into a different style, but from a different group. Yes. I forgot okay. to put that in there. I'm so okay. sorry. Yeah. Okay. And so a, uh, Icon actually switched with ATs or ATs chose to, to switch, switch with Icon, Icon which yes. is a great idea. But yes. Amazing idea. All right. Yeah. So, so they did Inception. Inception. Do okay. you want to go first? Inception's my favorite movie, so I genuinely do not mind going first. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> so Inception is my favorite movie, and I I I love theater. I was a theater hoe, you know what I mean? So my biggest issue with this performance, I thought it was such a cool, like I loved the sound, loved the arrangement, loved the set, loved everything. I love Bobby, but Bobby was not in character for most of that thing. And not just Bobby, it kind of everybody else didn't really have a character and the characters in there were so strong. Um, I really do think that the set overpowered every Fonte? It's Fonte. Okay. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I really do think the set kind of overshadowed their performance where I was like, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my God, the set's so cool. It moves at this and that. But then when I really started watching a couple of times, I was like, wait a minute they're not doing anything with the set. Like the set is just moving. They're just kind of going different cameras. The choreography was cool. They weren't interacting with it. Exactly. And they weren't, they weren't giving me a story. You have Inception that has a clear story and you didn't give me that. You kind of just gave me like a half-assed version of it. And so I did not like that part of it. Yeah. Loved, love, love, love the ending though, where like it turns red and they slow down because in the actual movie, like that stuff like that happens where if you're in a dream within a dream, it slows down. And so I would have loved if they would have showed like them going into a different dream, like 
doing all those little things because it's like shooting yourself like Bobby kind of hints at it where he shoots himself so he goes deeper into a dream but it's like it it wasn't enough you know like I, I, I wanted them to push a little bit harder and so that's my only not, not my only critique but like that's my critique yeah I mean you hit everything thank you you, you got it uh, again my um I, I agree the slowdown part was my absolute favorite but then unfortunately it followed by my least favorite part, which was the chanting and chaos that ensued. But this one was even worse because one of my favorite parts of the original song is that whoa, whoa, whoa that they have in the background of most of the song, but they changed it in, into almost like a choir chant. It sounded like children were doing it almost and it wasn't good like I think it stuck out from the song so much I don't think it made any sense with like the key that they took it in I don't know what was wrong with it but it, it my brain immediately just said no and it just pushed me out of the entire performance and then again all they were doing was just jumping around during that part it just didn't make sense and I haven't seen the Inception movie so I don't know if maybe there was some kind of correlate no no probably not maybe not really mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. I think that, again, and I hate that they do it near the end of every single song because they start out so strong for me and then they end on that note and I'm just like, why? <laughs> why? I just don't like it. But anything else, I really agree with Emily. She pretty much got all my notes. Bobby's adorable. Bobby is so <laughs> cute. I love Bobby. And like, I hate critiquing him because he's I, genuinely, he's not taking this seriously. And you know what? That's fine. He doesn't take this seriously. Every single reaction that he has about everything, he's pretty much just like, eh. eh. And it's so funny. I love him so much, but I wish he would just try a little bit harder. I mean, I really don't blame him. Kingdom is a fucking shit show. Like, like at the end of it, that's all that it is. It's a shit show. But like, we're going to pretend like it's a good show. <laughs> it's entertaining. I'll give you that. And I love learning the groups. I'm not going to lie. Like, I really have. I really have a fondness for the groups. <laughs> you stupid plug. I get it. What do you think? Where are you at? Where are you feeling? Oh. <laughs> I think their musical composition is unparalleled in this competition. I think they have the strongest like rearrangements. I think they're like just the composition of the song is incredible. Like Bobby mm -hmm. and Mino and whoever else they're working with, Chef's Kiss, you know what you're doing with your singers. You know how to utilize your your rappers. It's performance that they lack so much because the thing is the beginning of it I, I hate this in performances where it's like people have just single choreography. And the thing is, they weren't even doing choreography. They were walking to their spots. They yeah. were just pushing walls and allowing their set to speak for them. If you're not doing something purposeful to your spot, why are you doing it? Yep. It doesn't make sense. And that's something that we were always taught where it was like, if you are not performing to your spot, why are you doing this? It has no purpose. It has no point. And, like, I agree. I did really like the little, like, red, like, dance break. But I've already seen it. I saw it in the 100 second challenge. That's fair. Why would I be impressed by something you already showed me? That's fair. So, I was, it's one of those things where it's like they keep showing me the same things. But you're not getting any better at it. I really enjoyed the concept. But, again, it, it, uh, it did this thing where they failed short. It wasn't like a story it was a theme yeah I, w I would hardly call it a concept at that point because all they did was made the movie their set and then danced on that set they didn't have the story they didn't have like the actual conflicting things like like you said the only thing that we actually saw was bobby shooting himself to get further into the dreamscape that was about it yeah like everything else was just kind of like prop it was just there to follow the fact that it said inception like i I wish they would have dug a little bit deeper than just to follow a movie. Now, not only are we going to rate it one out of five stars, or are you guys done? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. One out of five stars. Did they understand the assignment for this one? Because the other two did not count because it's just cover songs of their own songs. Did they under understand the assignment this round, though? So, okay, we'll start I, with you. I give it a three. I'd give it a three. A three. Yeah. And do you think they understood the assignment? I want to say yes, because they took the song and made it their own. Okay. So, yes, I think they understood the assignment. Could they have gone deeper? Yes, but I think they still got it. That's a good one. Okay. Jordy? 
I also agree. I think it would be more like a two and a half, three. Um, I would say musically they understood the assignment. Mm-hmm. But maybe performance-wise, Perform- no. No, they really, really lack in their performances. Like Fair. No, I agree. I'm with you both. Like, th- oh, I would say three, too. Like, th- not three, two, but three as well. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say three as well. And yes, they understood the assignment musically. Performance-wise, I think they were lacking. Okay. And we're moving on to the next round, <sighs> which is a doozy. This is oh, God. This is we get to the no <laughs> limits. This is no limit. So the round is no limit. Wait, do we want to do no limit first or do we want to do the group? We'll do the breakdown first because that's the order that came first. Yeah. So the b- group first? Groups first. Yeah, the, it's one. The, the two groups. Okay. Because so, we'll do it in the order that it, that it happened in the show. Okay. So it was full dash actually. Mm-hmm. So full dash and it was icon. Bobby produced this one. So who wants to start? Do you actually want to start with you, Jordy? You are our, pro- our uh, local producer. So go ahead. and. It was impeccable. I no, I really, really liked it. Like it was one of my favorite performances of the entire um, group thing. And by God, let me say it. I think they should have won. I really yeah. do think they should have won. M- musically, they were better. The rappers actually like were like really, really on it. And the thing is, all of them had their unique style, but it didn't overpower any of them. Like none of them seemed to be more of a powerful rapper because of how the song was written. And it, it was just catchy. It was fun. Like, they, that's how you do a controlled chaos. Yeah. Again, also really fast, just to clarify if anyone's confused, this is the one where we they broke it up with It's One and Mayfly. We're talking about the It's One with Sun Woo from The Boys, um, I Bobby from Icon, and who from... Do we remember his name I'm from so SF9? Sorry. I'm, I am so sorry. I don't, SF9. I don't remember, I don't remember I, I his name, but he's... He a, was the tall, really, really handsome one. They're all so tall, handsome, handsome, but like... They're so tall. He's so tall. Also, we are going to be focusing on just Bobby for this episode, that we will be getting into Sun Woo and Mr. Handsome from FS9 in the next Mr. video. <laughs> but, but like, no, yeah. I genuinely believe Bobby did such a, such a good job. Like musically, again, I think he's powerhouse of this competition and he actually got to showcase like his talents and his talents are rapping and like, producing and yeah. producing it was it was so clean it was so nice like their concept there got a little bit like wonky at the end i didn't really get it but like it was just fun and the whole point was that they were going out of control of being idols they were just being rappers the, the rappers that they wanted to be and breaking out it. of the control i loved it i, I loved it like it i don't so really good. have a lot of complaints other than that. i have one complaint only mm-hmm. just one complaint <laughs> and it's about bobby <laughs> like is it my, the smiliness no absolutely not no smile away honey bun but no my one complaint is when he was rapping his little solo part he put the mic down and then he put on his little jacket and it was really awkward. Like it was, it's the lack of performance for me. Like it's just that one, that little tiny part was enough to kind of pull me out of the performance. And like, it just goes to show you, it's like little tiny details, like just really just, they're yeah, important. Cause that one, it could have been an easy fix. It lit- Cause the two other boys were literally walking up with the jacket. It could have been, he's wrapping in this hand as he's putting this sleeve in, he changes over, keeps wrapping and put this one in and they keep going and it never would have stopped. It would have been really clean and a flawless execution, but instead they chose to stop the performance so he could put a jacket on. I think it was just a really, really solid performance. They did such a good job, but Bobby really shown, showed, shown, shined shined really shined here like he really Uh, did he he did a very good job he did what a producer should have done he highlighted their their strong points what they were good at and all of the things that they weren't good at somebody else was covering it yeah so i think it was solid but he also when we watched the behind the scenes stuff he listened to what they wanted Mm -hmm. mr handsome preferred to be um with an auto-tune with an auto-tune and they gave it to him and then he was able to use that to his advantage because then Bobby took his mic at that middle part and was in auto tune as well. And it was really cool to get to hear Bobby go back and forth, but them obviously not have to do that editing mm-hmm. behind the scenes. They just switched mics and it was really good. I agree. I think that was a really well done performance. Bobby did really amazing except for that little jacket part. And I know that's really, really nitpicky, but like overall, I would, I, would I mean, with this great a- performances, you have to be nitpicky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if that's the only thing I'm complaining about, then you know it's a really good performance. Yeah. I mean, overall, like, I think I would personally give this performance a a 4.5. 
Agreed. Not perfect. Could have been perfect. There was a couple of things, not just the jacket thing, but there were a couple little like again nitpicky. Yeah, nitpicky like, things. Nitpicky things. Just like I'm with Jordy. I didn't understand the concept too much. I'm also really dumb, so like it could, it could be user error. It could anymore. also be though um, a language barrier for us. Could be because we cannot because we can't understand them, so we don't know what they're rapping about. So unless we get their lyrics printed out for us or something, then like we can't understand it. So uh, their concept specifically, it might not be. It, it might be user error. That like, might be us. Yeah. So definitely. But overall. Overall. Great performance. Great performance. Okay. So. I full 4.5. It was great. All right. And did they mi- hit the mark? Hit the mark? Meet the mark? See, I, I think yes, absolutely. Because they, since it was a no limit competition for them as well. Like I think they really kind of went out of the box and they really kind of talked. They spoke their truth, I think, which was so fun and refreshing. So I think they definitely hit the mark. Hi, Yugi. Get out of the courts. <laughs> Yugi. <laughs> the cat. No. Well, yeah, the cat. Our cat currently. Would you give, rate them? Five. Smash or pass? S- smash. <laughs> Definitely smash. <laughs> but no, it was really good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And like watching it more than once, listening to the lyrics. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was, really it was great. so it good. Was really so good. good. Loved it. I think, I think they got the assignment. And like I said, they, I really do think they should have won. They understood the assignment. They did. All right. So the ne- the, the okay. next one. Okay. He's fine. We will be talking about only Dong Hyuk. Okay. From Icon. I'm so sorry for if I'm pronounced. For the dance of king and queen. I can go first. Okay, I can go, go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. He was the strongest performer in that entire thing. And it really showed. Because the thing is, I don't know what happened. Because they did practice a lot together, but it definitely showed when you. Oh, <laughs> it definitely shows you're taught when you're performing that. Ev- oh, hold on. He's fine. We're fine. We can. See. Everyone needs to do the move the same way, whether or not you're comfortable with it, or you like it, because that's what performance is. Especially when you're with a group, if you do it differently than somebody else, it's not the same move. You're mm-hmm. not performing together. You are three performers doing three different dances. And that was my biggest complaint where it looked like all three of them had very different styles. And yes, maybe that may have been what they were trying to go for because of the three different kings. But I didn't like how it looked. It looked very uncohesive. It looked kind of sloppy because yeah. if that's what they were going for in the, in the like dance moves, that's fine. I just personally didn't like it like that. Oh, well, remember, it was confusing for us because we thought it was three different kings, but they it told us guy. it was one king, like a, like different slips into madness or something like that. And it was it was different, like forms of madness yeah. because the queen died. I didn't even know there was a queen until they explained that. And yeah. uh, going back to what Emily said, like if you don't if you have to explain the concept, you miss the mark. It doesn't help that they had different hairstyles. Yeah. Different clothing, different everything. So they didn't look like the same king. So and it and again, oh I will preface this. We always watch the performance the morning that they release, but then we aren't able to watch the actual show itself until either Friday night to Saturday morning once Vicky has all of the subtitles up. So we are forming all of our opinions, like our first instincts, like our no, no first impressions. Um when without any context from the members themselves we are just watching the performance and that's it so that's where a lot of our confusion comes from so this concept was so confusing i will say this about dong hyuk well let me say this about the performance it's my least favorite performance out of the entire show agreed i hate it it's i don't think they did bad individually i think the performance itself was just it, it, it i don't like it but i will say this about dong hyuk he brought it. He gave me character. Like, mm-hmm. I say this with as nicely as possible, but, like, I love idols that aren't afraid to be ugly. And I don't mean physically he is ugly because he's a very attractive person. I genuinely mean performing. Like, if you can perform and just allow yourself to be ugly and, like, be crazy and be, like, that's what he did. He embodied the craziness. Like, he, like, walked up to the camera and he was, like, ugly and, like, doing all those faces. Like, snarling and, like, looking insane, which is what his character was. Exactly. And, like, I loved that. Like, 
honestly, I wish it would probably like would have been a solo. Like I think I would have liked it more if it was a solo because I think I would have understood the story more because he gave the best performance out of the other two, out of the three of them in total. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Like it, honestly, it kind of makes me upset the fact that he had given so much face, so much character to this story, and this is the first time that I've seen it from Icon. Like yeah. the first time I've seen it, and the fact is, it was only one of them, and. Let's be honest here. I'm, I'm a touch on it now. I'm, I'm a touch on it again. You sent one person. You sent one person to be part of this dance crew, and you, you had to fill the entire room with backup dancers just to make it make sense. I'm. I think we'll touch more on that when yeah, we go to SF9. But that's a, that's all I gotta say for right now. And this is no shade to SF9 and the boys because I love the boys and Juyeon is actually my bias from the boys. So like this is coming from somebody who biases him. Like I promise you I'm not shading them. Like it's just genuinely like I was disappointed in this performance for lots of reasons and Dong Hyuk is not one of them. Yeah. Like I think he did the best that he could. I think it also and like again we will touch on on the other two but Icon is the same way. Two or three members of Icon sat out from this performance was it just two i think two I think two was, two performers because there's performed. six of them the really cute small one yeah, performed bobby performed is it jin juni june juni performed because the, the one with the Jin, beautiful Jin voice Won, Jin Won. Jin Won? Jin Won's that is the short cutie one <gasps> so cute he's so cute i'm so excited to talk about him next um, um but like so there were two icon members that sat out why yeah the why the the slight almost Machne and then the I just think the uh, actual Machne sat out. Yeah. Did yeah. He? I think so. I don't I'm know. so sorry. I'm, we I, I, we're I very we're, we're very I will say we are very, very new to Icon, B two B and F S nine. We're it very, was, very new to It's those the three. two that look very similar, but like one is significantly tanner than the other. Yeah. yeah. They why'd they sit out? Why did you allow members that could have aided your performance sit out? They could have even been backup dancers because you're right. Like, why were there so many backup dancers and not enough, like, icon members? Like, it, it did not make sense, personally. You had two left over. Okay, maybe you just wanted to send one person to the, the singing. Or maybe you wanted to send two. And maybe you just wanted to send one of your rappers. Use the rest for Put performance. Put the rest in the performance. Put it's, them in the back. It's a performance team. Like, your performers at the end of the day, that's what you, your, your contract says. That's what you are. You are performers. Perform. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. I agree. So, with that being said, what do you rate this one? And did they understand the assignment? This was a one out of five for me. Um, oh, also, this concept felt... Overdone. Overdone, because yeah. oh, B2B yeah. did it, and we will get into Ow. their performance of it, but Min Hyuk did a very similar performance in one of their earlier competitions it wasn't even like it was this same one and they just happened to do a similar sound or a similar concept no this they did this a while back in the show and so it was kind of disheartening to see such a similar concept and and, and such a similar like and i know it was different but like they both did a very traditional traditional costumes traditional like weaponry and all that kind of stuff and it just it felt overdone there was this competition was no limits and you decided to do a concept that was already done. Yeah. I had written down in my notes that um, there's a Korean, South Korean show called Kingdom. And it's about zombies. And it would have had like the same exact like costuming and stuff. And I'm not one to be like, this is what you should have done. But I'm like, it would have been cool to do No Limit with more of like a high fantasy concept. Because high fantasy seems to be the biggest thing that's actually hitting, mm -hmm. you know, like with all the other performances. And so I think it would have been nice to see maybe mix the traditional Korean with like some fantasy concepts and it would have brought something different to the table. And like, I wish they would have thought a little bit outside the box because I know it's just no limit, but I really wish they would have taken that literally with no limit, like how um, they did for their rap performance where their no limit was breaking out and be being the rappers that they are, not idols, but rappers. And I think that was a really good interpretation of no limit this one just missed wasn't. the mark yeah absolutely missed the mark and ask me, ask me, ask me. it's a one out of five moving on anyway <laughs> no okay jordy what do you think can i rate him individually or can, is it the yeah rate yes, him individually yeah he got a four out of five yes for me the group itself together as a whole 
scraped one. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you guys. One out of five for the group performance. Individually, Dong Hyo gets like a three and a half, four stars for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also with you guys. They missed the mark on the no limit. I yeah. didn't say that, but. Um, did oh, Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you or do you not agree? Yes, I agree. Okay, then. <laughs> That's all, all right. that matters. And we are on to Spark, which had Juni and Jin Hwan Ugh. from Icon again. Mm. All right. Again, this was the last uh, round for the group of It's One, and mm. it was just the two of them. All right. What did we think about that vocal performance? Uh, I, I will let you all talk on the vocals. I will just speak on composition wise. I don't think any of them really worked together for it. It kind of felt given and it was very clearly obvious in the studio version that we heard of it. Like the, the back they were working on it when yeah. they were working on it and it showed in their performance that none of them ag- exactly knew who was singing what and how they were both really, really stable. They're good singers, but like, I just don't think it was put together well, like the actual arrangement of voices and like the song, the song had a lot of potential, but like, how it was arranged did not make sense to me. No, I agree. I think I, we're still not really sure how to say, oh, hi, baby. We're still not really sure how to say his name exactly. Jun, June, Juni. He stole this performance for me. Absolutely. His voice is so good. It's, it's so, so different. good. Yes. He had his solo parts. He should be allowed and like encouraged to sound whatever way he wants to. But he did not try to blend when they were doing the six part harmonies, four part harmonies, when he was harmonizing with new, like he just, he stuck out. And for those portions, that's when I think he needed to try a little bit harder to disguise his voice more. I also feel almost like a little betrayed about the entire show because I had no idea his voice was this amazing because I didn't get this. I didn't get this sound from him throughout the entire co- like competition. It was just this performance where I actually realized how good of a singer he is. Because he was lip syncing for most of the competition and that's no tea, no shade. Like I, I'm with you. Like I feel like I was robbed of like his actual vocals. Like he's an amazing vocalist. I don't know why he wasn't singing live more often. And yeah, he had really nice vocals. Who who was the other guy? Jin Huan. But he's had stable vocals this entire time. No, but that's what I'm saying. I feel like he was the only one from Icon actually singing live most of the time. Jin Huan is just. He's, he's solid. He was so, also like so a performer. Cute. Like in the first 100 second ones, he was the center like the entire time and he was killing it. I didn't understand why they didn't send him to the performance one. Yeah. Like him and um, what's his name? Dong Hyuk. Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. I do think that they needed him more in the vocal team than they did in the performance team. Because but I get it. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm with you. But still like they, I didn't think, I felt like Icon didn't use the assets that they had. Well, except Bobby. Bobby did great. But, like, they didn't use the assets that they had. No, I'm with you. I mean, overall, I think... I think this performance was really good. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I liked it way much better than the performance or than the performance unit. I didn't like it as much as the rap unit, but I do think this was a very, very strong performance for Icon mm-hmm. themselves. Yeah. Where it's like, I, I agree with you, Junie definitely did need some work with harmonies themselves but overall i really liked his voice like i really liked his little part with um new from the boys like i thought their harmonies were really solid and then his voice in general was just really really beautiful i love the tone love the rasp love that he knew when to use falsetto and when to belt and like he, he just, just he was great he was so good and jen juan oh my god so stable the entire time so stable he was like basically their backbone he was, he was great. He mm-hmm. was so solid. No complaints whatsoever. I, I almost hate that like he didn't get like a moment that really stood out to me, but also all of his moments kind of stood out to me because there was nothing wrong with it. Like he, he literally kept that team going, it felt like for me. I agree. I'm 100% with you. Okay, so for the vocal unit though, do we believe that they hit the mark? Miss no 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 no. <laughs> the, oh, are we talking she, individually or are we talking as a group? Because no. I think we should talk uh, both. 
No. No. Neither. No. Neither on both. The problem is, is that, again, for both teams, I feel like the vocal had very little concept. So all that they did was do some really pretty harmonies. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't see how that's no limit. I don't see how that's going outside the box. I don't see how that's doing something never before seen before. Never before seen. (laughs) Never before seen. I I don't. Never seen before? Something like that, you know. But like, I I think that there could have been, I think something else could have been done. And I, I say that about both, but also there's something special about the other one that we'll like get into, which kind of made. (laughs) What are you doing with my daughter? Speak. Anyway, but yeah, so I don't think they understood the concept with this one, but I think our two boys that we're talking about right now did great. I agree. I'm with that 100%. I rate this performance a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, I agree. Because it was definitely not a bad performance at all whatsoever. I know there was a little bit of a mishap that we will get into whenever they finish performing, but aside from that mishap, I do believe that this was was a very strong performance. It was a very strong performance. it just, it wasn't, it wasn't the performance for No Limit. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm. Like, yeah. had this been another time or like just like a cover a girl group song or cover a girl song, I think they would have gotten a five out of five, you know? Well, mm-hmm. four and a half out of five. But it, it wasn't, it was No Limit. And I'm with you. It, it didn't feel like No Limit. Mm-hmm. All right. And now for the very last performance from Icon. I know you both are very excited. This was Classically Savage by Icon. So let's preface at the beginning um, how Icon used the word savage is a slur. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was problematic. They have been clocked for it. Another thing had been clocked in it for them as well, which we will touch up on. I haven't seen many people try and clock them for this. I'm not going to lie. Are you? joking i haven't seen i said i haven't seen it i i've seen a few tweets about it but honestly i don't think people realized just how bad it was so do you want to talk about why at least theirs and then we'll also get into this the second issue but like the first issue with how they changed the connotation of the word savage from the original song to how they turned it i didn't look at the, fully the lyrics because i i it was bad, so I was just like, Ooh. I kind of avoided it. But basically, they reinvented the um, Pretty Savage. Is that what it's originally Pretty called? Pretty Savage. Yeah, they reinvented Pretty Savage to have... From Blackpink. From Blackpink to have the connotation of when they used that word to kind of speak on the fact that they were more like barbaric if that makes sense. It was definitely a slur towards the indigenous community. Yeah. And it was like, I understand that they were trying to like change it. So it wouldn't be exactly the same, but they should have gone a different way. Yeah. My thing is, is when you're singing about a song called Savage and you're in a jungle, having spears thrown at you being having like paper bags tossed on top of your head and like fighting against the other side, it's a very clear message of what you're trying to send and it's not okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. It was very. It was. It was very offensive, and you don't have to agree with us. But this is. Uh, we're telling you how it is. Like it was very offensive, and it was not cool. Yeah. The other thing is that people are trying to say it. It's not. It's not. Lisa from Blackpink decided to join them as as a part of their like no limit. Love her, mean it, but she was wearing a gold sparkly do rag, and she's not black. Yeah. Yeah. Not She's cool. not. Yeah. Do rags are a protective hairstyle for um, the black community. Like, or it's not a protective hairstyle. It's a protective thing for their hair to lay it flat. It does like many different things. It's not. And it does nothing for her hair type. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not an accessory. It's just a costume. It's not her. a costume. Yeah. So. And overall, this, this is essentially what the whole thing was about. It's like you use culture as a costume and it's, it was really mockery and I did not appreciate it. And without even, like, going off on, like, all the racist connotations off of this, the performance itself was weak. Yeah, I completely agree. They they did the same thing that they did with Inception, but even worse, they used their backup dancers as the actual dancing. I think I saw maybe, like, a minute of choreography that they actually did. Everything else was walking to their places, and you already know how I feel about that. They were literally just walking. And how did they end the song? They got onto the shoulders of their backup dancers and and chanted. 
like literally it was lazy it was sloppy mm-hmm. the fact is like um what's her name lisa lisa literally came in and sang the first verse that they had already sung like that come on also, it, it has a really fat shamey line that i really do not appreciate yeah. as a plus size girl like it's just yes yeah, so yeah. the, the fact that we <laughs> fight you how dare you hit my brother <laughs> so the fact that like they were already singing a song that we don't like already kind of started the performance off i like blackpink yes first first like, yes me and abby we watched the documentary we so do good amazing we love the girls we really really do and we do enjoy a lot of their music it's pretty savage was not one of them if Mm -hmm. i was straight i'd like them yep yep it's it's one of those things where like i i agree with jordy i think the fact that they had her sing the same verse that they sung at the very beginning of their remix but she sung it in the original key and just the actual lyrics of the old song musically in its composition Again, I think it was one of the best remixes of that round. They did a very good job. They changed it. I didn't even realize it was pretty savage because I know what that song sounds like. But like it, it, it didn't. I think it sounded similar. It sounded similar, but it, it was icon. Does that make sense? It was very much so icon. Yeah. It wasn't like Black Pink's pretty savage. Yeah. And another thing. What was up with the TV? Yeah, I didn't yeah. get the concept. Like, again, they're doing this thing where it's not a concept. It's a theme. Don't let your set speak for you. I don't understand your story. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Like it was, it was weak. It was I thought it was Jumanji and then it wasn't Jumanji and <laughs> I don't, cute. he's really cute. I just, I don't, I don't understand it. it. It did not make sense. And what I did understand was really offensive. So I didn't want it to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> also, this was, this was kind of more of, I guess, of a nitpicky thing, but I hated the fact that they brought in such a cool special guest and then didn't interact with her. Yeah. She, like she was back in the very back area of this, did her little verse and then disappeared. Like they never interacted. They didn't. Lisa is their main dancer, isn't she, for Blackpink? Mm. She is such a good performer. Why didn't you let her dance? Why didn't you let her join your performance? Like it was just all around just a really, really confusing performance. There's something I wanted to um, introduce since yes. this is technically their I last think. one. For now. My foot's falling asleep. Um, Love you. It did not feel like their stages got any better. If anything, it got progressively worse. Because mm-hmm. it felt like not only were the same things that they showed us in the first couple of rounds shown again, it was the fact what they thought bigger stages meant, like m- closer to the end stages, like all in or not stages, meant them doing less performance and adding in more theatrical like Mm -hmm. things to it but not even well done theatrical things yeah so like i don't really know what to like say to that other than do better yeah honestly yeah do better um i really do hope for the next what is it two two more performances we have one more one more one more one One more performance i hope for their final performance they can take our critique you know (laughs) like now they can take Hopefully, like, a lot of the judges agree with us. Maybe not about the racism thing, but, like, hopefully they agree that they are not showing enough progression um, and they can improve on that Gen- genuinely because I do want Icon to do really well because I really do like them, but they they do need to do better and they need to do better as Icon, mm-hmm. not individually, not set-wise, but as a group, they need to do better. Yep. All right, so we'll go with you. What do you rate it out of five stars? You can be honest. Zero. 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 I mean, how can you rate this good at all when there's so much racism in it? I'm not even like not, not even, even speaking that. on that. It was it was chaotic. It was messy. It was a song that I honestly felt was kind of supposed to be a lot bigger than what they did. And all they did was literally have pitchforks and be attached to like trees in the jungle like it what did you perform like you you did that little one part right there and then lisa came out and then boom that was it you started chanting and being on top of people's like shoulders it 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 was it wasn't there wasn't anything to rate honestly like what what was i gonna rate how good your backup dancers did you're not wrong that is a rule between us three is that we do not rate performances based off of backup dancers 
we are rating it based off of the actual groups that are performing because if we're rating the backup dancers then are, are they in the competition you know what i mean like are they competing no so yep so you're right like there was nothing to really rate um do you think that they understood the concept yeah understood the assignment no i mean no. Ag- again the no limits competition like assignment is hard because like how far can you go until you don't have any limits did they did they go against the grain they mm-hmm. brought in a special guest that's it so i think i uh, see uh, this is where i will say i disagree with y'all mm-hmm. i do think that they understood the assignment i don't think they did it well but i think they understood the assignment where it's like it was no limit so what did they do they bring in one of the most popular female idol, idol girls fair so I think they understood, hey, listen, this is no limit. Let me bring in somebody that's going to obviously do some favors for me. That's fair. I that's mean, fair. but like I said, I don't, do I think the assignment was done well? No. They put their name on and turned it in, though. Yeah. That's fair. But yeah. I'll give you that. That's very fair. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. That's very fair. Also, y'all should know that we just bully each other into, like, agreeing with each other. So <laughs> we never disagree. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh-uh. We'll I disagree with you guys. Bully you into submission. What? Nope. I disagree with you guys. <laughs> the people's elbow. You know how long I I stayed away from Stray Kids? But, but, but you literally admitted a few days ago that you'd be open to listening to some of their stuff. It took me how long? But you, we still got it you. It wasn't because of you. It was because of Kingdom. Whatever. Anyways, oh, speaking of Stray speaking Kids. Of Stray Kids. I, w- I was giving you guys a good segue. Thank by you. It's a good you. segue. Okay. Good segue, good segue. So, me and Abby got into Stray Kids. We we are fans love of Stray Kids. Love them. Love them. Love Stray Kids. Love, 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 love Stray Kids. To the point that I have struggled so hard picking a bias. Like, I have literally gone through every single person in that group. And I'm... Can you Mine's still see me? Been. Can you still see me? Jordy's a Chen solo stan. Pass it on. <laughs> Wait, I'm not a solo stan. No, no, he does like Stray Kids, but Chan it's, it's was... It just took me a second. Chan. 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 Chan was he, the one that got you into he it. He convinced me. See, Chan was my original bias, and then I just went through the line, and right now I'm currently at Jisung, but we shall see if that sticks, because I just keep changing it. Felix was also my bias at one point. Mina was my bias. This thing was my bias. Like, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Hyunjin was mine, and then Changbin. My baby. I am so mad about Hyunjin, but I'm not mad at Hyunjin. We just know we have a lot of feelings about the fact that he hasn't been here, but we have recently learned that that may be his choice as to why he is not here. So we are going to love him and support him. And whenever him and JYP are ready to let him come back, we will welcome him with loving arms. That was a beautifully well said. Um, What is that like? Very political answer. Thank you. Come back. Fuck JYP. <laughs> That's all I got to say. JYP. <laughs> wait, is that a threat? Blur me out. <laughs> wait, wait. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> wait, that's, that, uh, that just means I'm going to steal your voice, you know, Little Mermaid style. <laughs> Anyways, I don't like JYP. I don't like how he treats his artists. And I do not like what he's done to Hyunjin. And that's the tea on that. That's but now tea. we are going to be talking about their performances. We're going back to the beginning and doing the same thing like we did with Icon. Exactly. Except it's Stray Kids. Um, okay, so Stray Kids' 100 second performance, which was their introduction stage, which was a mirror. Hang on, I'm so sorry. He's licking himself, so we need to censor him. Censor him. <laughs> Sir, this is not an OnlyFans. <laughs> so, yes, 100 second. All right. This was the one and only performance that Hyunjin was in, so it makes me really sad. But I think they did good. It was a good performance. It was I, Chan's makeup scared me. Um, Chet, Chen's makeup was awful. That, I mean, that's not a performance thing. That was just. That John was just Ben looked great with the with that blowtorch. <laughs> that's Felix, all like. <laughs> Felix went too hard and ripped his mic off. <laughs> he did, and then Chan missed the mark at the very end. But you know what? It was still it's entertaining. They put on a good show. It was fun. Very high energy. I mm-hmm. can't give you anything because my notes literally say beyond best dancer, mice gone, Felix. <laughs> what? Oh. Wait that's, until that's all I have. I was gonna say, just wait until we get to um, Stray Kids Wolf performance because I wrote two things down because my Benadryl had kicked in. <laughs> no, I, I really, really enjoyed Hyunjin actually. Like I, I'm learning their names, so I still don't know exactly who is who. But I, he was such, he was one of their best performers. He and is it's, it's one of such, their best performers. It's such a shame because he brought this level of confidence that we didn't see for in the rest of the performance. Pretty, pretty much until 
you know, and yeah. Yeah. until we get there. Well, we will get there though. But like, yeah, it was it was pretty disappointing because I saw their potential in that one thing. Like, I I do think they deserve to win that round. It was pretty. It was one of their strongest performances of the season, and it was just kind of disappointing to see that was one of their strongest performances of the season. If that, that makes got sense. Knocked, and then he left and. A lot of their confidence, I think, was gone after that. Yeah. Hyunjin has the thing that I had talked about with Dong Hyuk, but he's not afraid to look ugly. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. like, that is one of my favorite things about Hyunjin. He commits to the character. Does not matter what character, cutesy, ugly, crazy, like, does not matter. Like, I love Hyunjin, and I love his performance, and he was amazing. Like, all of like all of Stray Kids did amazing. Like, they're just amazing performers in general. They definitely know how to put on a show. But Hyunjin just... He's he's so special when it comes to performing, and you can tell that he loves performing. He lives to be on the stage. But yeah, overall, it was a solid performance. It was um, good. It was fun. I'm not gonna ask if they got these if they understood the assignment. It's again, it's a cover song of their own song. So I saw they understood the assignment. I mean, it was just their intro. It was letting them. It was letting the other people know who they are, and I think that performance definitely did it. We they came out with that mall of flavor that Absolutely. they are so well known for. And I think they, I think they killed it. I agree. Um, rate it out of five stars. I'd say four out of five. Four. four. Okay. Four. Perfect. Yeah, four. four out of five. Definitely. It was really amazing. All right. We are moving on to Stray Kids Jazzin, which was to the world, which was taking their song and rearranging it and making it kind of their own from their own, J- just doing something different with their own song performance week. Week, week, week. But yeah, they, was, this they was did. That was the God's Menu side effects mashup. Mm-hmm. That mm. was the one where they were white outfits, right? Going from room to room. Mm. Yeah. The body. The boom, boom, boom. boom. Yes. Um, uh, we didn't understand this concept at all. And this is not because we were dumb. Because we, I, we. Even when we were watching their explanation of it, we were still like, what? I don't think they really understood their concept in that one either because they kind of had like, oh, it's this. Oh, but it's this. And so it kind of just like, it, it really, it, it was a very, um, what is that? Like broad concept that didn't translate. translate. Yep. It really didn't because this is the one that had like the, the things breaking and stuff like that, I think. This was the, yeah, the one where they were on the different pedestals and then there was the puppetry scene. Oh, the giant lighting mushroom. Yeah, and this was also the one where uh, Chan was standing and then there was the guy upside down mimicking him. Like very cool like effects and very cool things. But again, they need they used backup dancers for a lot of it. So this was another issue where instead of letting their members do the very cool thing, they relied on backup dancers for a lot of this performance yeah i i will say though uh, some positives i really liked the actual performance that they did though they do a really good job of committing to characters which i we've said it before with icon that that they don't commit to characters stray kids commit to their characters and they were really dark really spooky and um yeah this is a running theme for me changbin and jisung amazing they did so good. Their rap line is so strong, and they they did really really good. I agree. Their their rap was really really amazing. Um, yeah, I think Singman's little acting part was really nice, really well done. I actually thought he fell. Like I thought it was like a mistake or something. Turns out it it wasn't. So we found that out um, with the behind the scenes and stuff. But overall, I think the acting was really really well done. Um, Chen had the belly chain, didn't he, for this one? Yes. No, 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 no. Next one. That's the next, next one. one. I'm so sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. He had it for this one, too. Did he have Oh, he had one for both? Yeah. Fair. Chen, Chen looks great. Belly chain. Chen, belly chain. <laughs> he looks great. What do you think? I'll say I think um, the musical part of it, Thracha, mm-hmm. I, dare I say it, they're one of the best, like, producers, I think, in the fourth generation fourth generation yep, third fourth gen? gen fourth gen like k-pop boys but they really let me down on this one it wasn't that much different it just kind of felt like they put their song with some creepy noises in the back and then called it a day um Fair. individually all of these things would have been very good for a performance but i felt like it was kind of one of those things where they were given too much freedom and because of that they kind of wanted to mash a lot of things together and it just didn't translate well i think they are very talented like boys they it was a 
good starting point, if that makes sense. I think if they had reined it in, had a clearer concept, have had a clearer like directive of what they were trying to do, it would have been a lot better. Yeah. Um, again, we, we talked about the backup dancers. I don't really like backup dancers doing stuff for them. I will admit that every single like movement of perspective, even if I didn't like it was per purposeful. Yeah. Every, every time they went somewhere, it, it was following that concept, even if we didn't get it. Yeah. It felt really, in my notes, I put that it felt really, really disjointed mm, yeah, and yeah. like it just, it, that's kind of it. Like it just felt really disjointed. And they had giant light mushrooms, which I thought was pretty cool. I don't know why I wrote that down. I just really liked the giant light mushrooms. That's fair. But yeah, rappers were really amazing. But I also don't think that the vocalist got a chance to shine, like pretty much at all for this one. Overall, I would say 3.5 for me. I would say three, three, just I, three for me. Yeah, I think they understood the concept because they just had to change up their song. And so they did that by mashing it with another one. I think they, they, they got it. They, they understood. It just wasn't well executed. Yeah. What do you think? Three. Three. Like I said, I, I think they had all the tools. They had the talent. They had the effort. It just wasn't quite there. It okay. wasn't that good of a performance. Yep. No. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. And so now we are moving on to Stray Kids Reborn, where they actually switched with B2B, and they switched with the song I'll Be Your Man. <sighs> I will say they understood the concept. I will start off with that. Because they went, they they challenged themselves by doing a song that had a sound that they don't do. Stray Kids is not known for slowing it down. So the fact that they decided to, to, to challenge themselves like that, I will give them that point. That's the only point I'm going to give them. I, they didn't make it Stray Kids. It was definitely a cover of, uh, a, of a group. That's all that it was. They didn't um, make it their own. And I love Thracha. I love Thracha. I love Chen. I love all of them. Please understand that I love them, but I will say this and cancel me or whatever. I think whoever did the vocal arrangement for the group let them down, specifically Jongin. I don't think it was Jongin's fault. Jongin, from the very beginning, was very clear that he could not hit those notes. Singman struggled. Jisung struggled. And... They should have taken it down a key. They should have done something else. They, but they didn't, and it showed. It it showed really, really bad. Like how much they were struggling vocally. I think the best thing they could have done was take that slow song and ramp it up, make it inherently Stray Kids, and they didn't do that. Also, my other biggest complaint is that Chen. I don't know what happened. I feel like he chickened out of the song. Like. I, I, I almost felt like he kind of threw Jongin under the bus. Chan barely performed. He had one or two lines near the very end. And the entire time we were like, oh, he must not be performing because he's ramping his voice up for some insane thing near the end. Because at the end of the day, Chan may be a part of Three Racha, but he's one of their vocalists. And so we were sitting there waiting for some big show outy thing to happen. And he did a small one, but then left the hardest part to their baby, who obviously couldn't do it. Yeah. And honestly, it just, it sucked. Like, I genuinely, it really did. Not Jong-in. I mean, I think it sucked for Jong-in. The situation. Yeah. Like, it was very obvious he could not hit those notes. And it, when you can't hit a note, especially... The way that that, with the placement of that note specifically, it was definitely in like a weird like chest to head vo like range and stuff. So he needed to switch. And even as like a really trained singer, that's really hard to do. You could hear as he was ramping up that he already missed, missed it from the very beginning. There was no saving that note because he was already off from the very beginning of that like build up. There, there was no way he was going to be able to turn that around. It was out of his range. It was genuinely out of his range. And I think the whole song was out of most of their ranges. But I will say, Jisung, Singman, and Changbin, that ending with the singing and the rapping on top of it, beautiful. That was so beautiful. So well done. Whoever worked on the song really let every single one of them down. He really fucked up because I know he, I know he had a big part in where the vocals I, I don't know if he was the one that did the vocal arrangement though so I don't want to blame him 
but I'm not mad at him, but they do have an in-house prof- uh, producer who helps them. But mm-hmm. I know three Raja does do a majority of it, but they specifically handle the beats and rap. So I don't know if they have like a vocal arrangist. Either, either helps. way, I will say three Raja messed up yeah. because the thing is, Jisung is a rapper. Like I know he's both, but where he is strongest, is I believe it is a rapper. And so not only did they have to use that, that he had to be part of the vocal team to even hit the notes, I think showed that they were very weak in this aspect. Chen didn't even sing because I feel like he didn't, he couldn't even get there. Like he, like baseline, he could not be in the key that they had to be. He Sig- literally did falsetto at the end. Like those yeah. little notes were all falsetto. They like I genuinely, S- Sigmund was the best one. And even then he was struggling. Like yeah. you, you could physically, like visually, physically see how bad he was struggling and, and it wasn't because he's a bad singer but like it was imagine such a weird key it was such a weird key just imagine the bottom note is one of your highest notes that you can hit like th- that has to be hard like, like production wise that just doesn't make sense and you're gonna make your like performers be super uncomfortable my the highlight for it was chong been rapping he's always on top and stuff like that but again their performance was low their arrangement was not that great yeah. and i just don't think it was a good performance in general and they had a potato heart i couldn't get past it it, like was it, it looked like a potato and and the fact is they did change the song yeah to a build-up that was to nothing like i think it was really yeah. cool like that part with chong bin and Jisung and sigmund 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 but where'd it go like you yeah. built up to that and that was it it felt like a like a top of a roller coaster and then we just went flew nowhere. in. Yeah. You know, no, like we literally just went in there like, yep, that's it. Yeah. The biggest issue I think was the fact that, and if I'm wrong, please, please know I apologize. I'm pretty sure they did it in the original key. Yes. It's because they wanted to be like, we can do this too. At the end of the day, B2B is known for their vocals. They are known for how strong a vocalist that they are. <laughs> Why did they try to do the same thing when it's already been done by a group that is vocals. Why did they not change it and and so that way they could show their strengths? Even even B2B said it. We don't want to do this song because it's hard. They, they, said they, they, they said they probably couldn't do it anymore because they did that back in their prime when they were like in their like early 20s. And like not even talking about like their actual composition of the song or who was singing what. The fact is the concept fell short. I had no idea what was going on. Like I, such a confusing like I, I understand what they were trying to go for, but not really. They like, didn't. They didn't. They had either. to explain it to me. So I don't think they understood the assignment. They didn't make it into Stray Kids. It was very much so Stray Kids covering B two B. Yeah, B two B. Was this the performance? Was Felix was on the ground and getting dragged by yes. those two guys? Oh yeah. A word about Stray Kids. A word. This is just a complaint that I have all around. Why do you use Felix for impact <laughs> points all the time? That is his sole purpose and job, and it makes me so upset because he could be so much more of a performer. Okay, but I will not. I'm not gonna lie. His little part was actually really cool. Yeah, it, it looked, was. But like, my, that, he that's was being my thing. dragged by backup dancers, y'all. Like, it looked weird. It the way that they were dragging him was really, really weird. It was like 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 labor position and I was like, This is just strange. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like why do you continuously use just him for like an impact point? Because they know it works. I mean, look at us. <laughs> we're here, aren't we? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Loving stray kids. All right, we are moving on. Okay. Mayfly. Mayfly, 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 Mayfly. We are starting with Colors with a U. Hey, we're working. I, I I didn't open it. I'm just holding it. Leo, I hope you know you're going to be a part of our podcast. You're in it. Oh. Whoa. Say hi to our roommate, Leo. 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 It's fine. Just ignore him in the background. Um. Oh my God, I look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> you said that before. I still look like one. <laughs> you're still in it, Leo. <laughs> look at. I love my thing. He's like, what we got? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so yes, rap itself was good. Beat wasn't it, Chief? I cannot tell you how it sounds. Rap was good. Beat wasn't it, Chief? That's all I remember. I don't even fully like remember that song very well. Like it's so un like unmemorable. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I don't know if I don't remember it because I don't remember it because it wasn't 
unmemorable or if it's because of my concussion. It could. Yeah. Also, I have a concussion. So if I ever like trail off or stutter or anything, it's I'm fine. She's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. That was one of the things we dealt with. Yeah. My concussion. I have a bone to pick. Go ahead. Pick the bone. Pick that bone. I don't know. It felt very much like they took over. Not in like a bad way because they're very good producers. But I think it was an uncompleted beat that they didn't really finish and it didn't really go anywhere. And like I saw the potential in it, but it it felt very unfinished. And like maybe that was the point because it was like about colors. But um, I just I it was a good start. And again, they kind of felt like they had that same thing going throughout these last like two perform three two performances felt like they had all the tools in their corner but it just kind of fell flat i think chan ben and jisung did great chan i just unmemorable unmemorable and i love him like love him mean it like truly do i just wasn't it for me chief yeah, yeah. i was about to start talking about that hong and i was like wait now we're not we there we're not we there can't stop i love him we can't talk about them yet <sighs> overall i love i loved jisung and Bin's raps i'm with you i think they were really amazing didn't love the beat i think the message was really really meaningful but i almost feel like it didn't go anywhere yeah yeah like definitely they were like oh we are the colors and stuff like that and like i loved like how literal they took it but i almost kind of wish they would have pushed the envelope again it is no limit you know so y you had some dry paint brushes and you had some people spray some paint you know what i mean like it just it fell a little flat again yeah, I'm with you <sighs> definitely i personally think they missed the mark a little bit um i don't think it was a bad performance in general though like had it been like i said another like an, another type of competition not competition another what's the word <sighs> concussion brain oh um like just on a, one like a regular like award show not even just award show or like, like come backstage no it, it, it had it been like another um assignment <laughs> Gotcha. Like another, like a different piece. Or yeah. Not, it would have made more sense if yeah. it was something else other than No Limit. Yeah. 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 Because like, like I said, had it, if it stayed No Limit, I think they missed the mark. If it was something else, I think it would have been better. Yeah. I don't have a lot for this one. The, the rest of my, of my points are not about three racha. I realized. So I can't talk about it. In the actual show, I loved their chemistry. I'm not even going to lie. Like the, the rap team, their chemistry was so stinking cute. It really, oh really was. Yes. I truly 100% believe that Chin and Hong Jun are now dating. You cannot. My thing is what I will say is, and this will carry, I think, through the next videos that we do when we're talking about this. May Fly's chemistry in general, I think, was so much better Insane. than its one. And I think that May Fly really took more time out of their day to actually come together and practice everything and work together. While, except, well, the, the rap team on its one really worked well together. But I think the other two really struggled with finding time to work together. And so they did all of their pieces very separately while Mayfly really like from day one, they were all together working really hard. And I think that showed in every single performance. And I hope you understand that like, I, I loved both performances with Mayfly and its one. I, it, I'm not upset that one of them, like Mayfly won it because they, very well did deserve it because it was a really great performance really like we're being very nitpicky here where i'm like oh it didn't sound as good as i expected it to because i expect great things from all three of those groups that entire round they just did not let me down like it's not mayfly mm -hmm. mayfly just had great chemistry they did they worked very well together even though they were similar or slightly different groups they made sure that all of them did something they were comfortable with yeah no i agree Overall, I think their chemistry was really wonderful, and it was a really nice performance. Um, I wish it, there would have been more. That's that's kind of it. That's kind of what it, it's boiling down to. We wish there would have been more because as really big fans of both Stray Kids and ATs, we want to see them do the best, and we don't think this was the best that they could have done. Yeah, hmm. I agree. So I give this performance, I think I'm going to say a four because I still really loved it. Four out of five. 3.5. Four. four. Yeah, and... I don't think personally that they um, understood the assignment. I agree. I did. Okay. okay. Defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, it's that same thing that I've been talking about this entire podcast. They had the tools. 
they had everything that they needed to have succeeded, but I think they just felt just a little short. Okay, that's fair. You know what? You're right. Okay, he, he did a good job defending himself. He did. I'll, I'll let it pass for now. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so now we are going to my favorite. So this is the Stray Kids performance of Wolf by XO. Um, I will read you my two notes that I have for this. Um, be Please be prepared. <laughs> Gay, Woo Young, and Felix, ATs did awesome. Yeah, I think Stray Kids did really, really good. So in Stray Kids, there was Felix. I said Woo Young in my head. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Felix, Mino, Jongin. Jongin, yeah. That's it. Is that it? That's Three it. of them? Yep. Because Sigmund was part of the vocal. Stop crying. And is on there. I, no, I was like, we're missing. I was like, we're missing someone. I was like, look at me yeah, like Jay, I do be missing. I miss him a lot. He would have brought something so amazing to this performance. Like, I can't even lie. Oh, it would have been so good. I, I just want to point out here that like, <laughs> anyways, um, Felix, is he a main dancer or whatever? Yeah, he's, he's part of the dance, dance line. line. Okay, yeah. It really, really showed in this one. He... I personally think he stole the show. He had such great face, such great performance. Like he, he really was that main werewolf. I was like, ooh, honey. Yeah. You were like, Jello, ooh, honey. Ooh, Jello. I was like, ah, ooh. <laughs> literally, I was like, hello. But I really enjoyed this performance because it felt like this was the first time we actually got to see Stray Kids performing super confidently. Like Stray Nina, Kids Unleashed. Yeah, like is that. He's doing great. Uh, what's his name? Mino. 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 He, he was not afraid to look ugly. Like he, yeah. he was so in character, so in character. So like it was so good. Like this is the side of Stray Kids that I did not get to see, and like I actually felt like investigating and like looking into them because of it, because they did such a great. What? Is, what are they doing? I don't know. Mino is known to be kind of like a like a stone cold like I don't. I don't know the right word for this one, so I don't, so please don't clock me for anything. But they say like he's a very like neutral faced performer, but like he's very good at stoic. dancing. The word you're looking for is stoic. 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 So he's a very stoic performer, and I think this is the first time I saw him really unleash himself, like just really just lose. His he did great. He, amazing. Like I loved it. Literally, my only two things were Wolf by EXO, which was the song, and Skis had a hard time keeping up character wise next to. 80s yeah. yeah but yeah they straight kids did really really well they did really really well and i really do think that having 80s who are such strong performers like it forced them to have to do better yeah like give me more like i've been complimenting their performances but like compared to 80s you're right like they fall a little flat but they were forced to bring it even harder and felix's little jump to wooya ah! it was great my favorite yeah. part was watching him run from San's fan cam because you just saw him jump and then he went out of sc- out of screen. It my was really favorite, funny. My favorite part was to watch him do it the very first time, like in the uh, practice in the practice room, and then he just like kind of just snuggles into Wuyang. And I'm like, oh, it's so cute. They are really Wuyang really game. cute. They're Shh. really cute. We cannot assume anybody's sexualities. You're right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. Stray kids. Love poem uh, by IU. Ah, uh, and here we are uh, just talking about Singman as oh much. My God. I just, I, I want to preface with the fact is I did not expect Singman to be that great of a singer. He carried that melody so well. Singman can oh sing, God. man. <laughs> I made that joke first. Oh, my thing is, is that I knew that, I knew that he was good. I knew that he was really, really, really good at singing. But in Stray Kids, in their group, they have a very, very youthful sound. Yeah. And so I was worried about how Sigmund would mesh in with the other two performers. And so the fact that he not only carried that melody so well and kept all of them on track... He matured his voice for this performance so well, it was amazing. Sigmund really wowed me because I, I wasn't concerned about the other two. I was 
a bit hesitant about how Sigmund was going to meld in with them. And he smashed through all my expectations. Like he was and so I th- good. I think that goes to the producer and we'll not producer, the arranger, the vocal arranger. And we'll talk about him later because he, he deserves all, he deserves the credit, but like, God, he really knew where to put their voices and he knew what was going to sound good. And he knew who was going to sound better as the harmony and who was going to sound better as the melody. And like putting Sigmund at the melody was the best thing he could have done. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. He carried it. He did such a good freaking job. I think there was, I think we noticed that there was one tiny part. It was literally two seconds. It was maybe. like, it was like two, like half notes where Sigmund was off like a tiny bit, but it was so fast and so small that it was only because we were really, really listening and just to nitpick. That was the only part that wasn't like perfection all the rest though amazing i mean i wasn't even excited for this performance because we've always like for us three i we don't like slow songs we don't like ballads i think i i find them to be boring personally and i'm not here for that my my problem is is before i got into k-pop i used to love ballads but the way i used to love them was when there were harmonies because western artists not not our pop artists but when i listen to like choirs i when i listen to more classical music i love slow songs because i love listening to those tart tight harmonies when i got into k-pop i had to come to the realization that k-pop does not tend to harmonize very often so whenever it's slow songs it's just one person singing and it can honestly get very boring very quickly i'm with you but these kinds of performances when they have those three-part harmonies And the thing is, like, three-part harmony is so hard to do, especially when there's just three of you, because for the way that um, singing works is that for one, like, one high note, you need to have two low notes, Mm -hmm. because just, if not, it's just going to get messed up, and you can't sit there and say, like, the microphones did anything for that, because at the end of the day, the microphones are amplifying the voice that you're already giving. They can't sit there and, like... You you know, you can't just, like, constantly pull it in and out, in and out, Mm -hmm. so... All of that was the control from the boys themselves. So like when there was three-part harmony and it sounds beautiful, it's because they were controlling their voice to be not too loud or to be very, very loud. And it was just, it was so beautiful. It was great. So well done. It made me cry my eyes out. Did not realize what the song was at the time. And then when I did, sobbed again. We watched like four times and I cried each time. Yep. Yeah, because for those that don't know, this was IU's song and this was her song that she did in contribution basically and like she dedicated it yeah she dedicated it to Sully yeah who was a really really good friend of hers in in the k-pop industry um who who did pass away um and it was it's just it's such a heart-wrenching song when you read those lyrics oh it's just oh my god yeah it was I really appreciated that they didn't try to make it like cheap or anything by like doing a full performance or anything they just kept it very soft very like comforting it was so good. And I love that they kept looking at each other because they were like, I'll be there. And it's like literally staring at each other. Like, listen, like I am here for you. And like, it was just, it was amazing. So good. Six out of five, 10 out of five. Like, I think it's hands down one of the best performances of Some, Kingdom. Someone said it was the best performance and I agree. Uh, yeah. My favorite performance out of Kingdom. One of my favorites. I think it would, I would say it's my favorite performance out of Kingdom. I have a lot of other favorites, but this is the one performance that I can watch four or five times a day and it never gets old like I just find something new to fall in love with and you know what Singman 10 out of 10 honey you did amazing yes I agree and coming from that I think gave him the confidence for the next performance that we're about to talk about yep but did they understand the assignment yes yes absolutely no limit their voices insane I think it was a very very good performance but I'm gonna have to disagree I don't think they understood the assignment it was Defend a, yourself. It was a really, like, it's a, don't get me wrong. It was an amazing performance. I think it was one of my favorite performances. But the thing is, they picked a song, a very, very beautiful song. They did a very good job of singing it. But, like, all they did was do a cover. Like, it, like, does that make sense? They did what, what, what Jung Ho wanted. They stood on white pillars and let dry ice go around. I know. And I'm just like, <laughs> I think you're wrong. Okay. There was no limit. Their voices had you know no what? limit. Okay. You know what? It, no <laughs> limit. Yeah, they did it. Thank you. Last performance. 
which was Stray Kids, and they did Deadpool, and it was a nice remix of do 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 of Blackpink's do 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 do, <laughs> and uh, their uh, God's Menu. Mm. I will say, mm. I will start this off because I love Deadpool. Mm. That shit was fucking fire. <laughs> that was the epitome of no limit like this is i have been ranting about it for literally like ever since it came out they they did not they did not just understand the assignment they wrote the assignment themselves you chose a character that has no limits like deadpool is known for breaking the fourth wall for being completely out of his mind and just this was the best like interpretation of this like of that of no limit because they chose a character that has no limits and they did it well. Like they did it amazingly. Like it was just insane. It was so cool. It was great. I loved the remix. Um, there, there, of course, people have already put these two songs together as like on as remixes, as edits online. And so the fact that they actually did it in real life and did the whole hit you with that do 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 like i think it was so fun that they put those together and they it was such a good mix i think it was great i think even and this is another thing where they understood the concept they made this concept so clear i've never seen deadpool i've never seen the movie <laughs> you literally she saw the little <laughs> thing and she was like oh isn't that that little guy that you like that little superhero <laughs> Like, I'm their mom. Isn't that one of those little friends that you have? <laughs> like, I, I recognized it, though, immediately from pop culture things that I've seen. And I could follow this concept, even though I've never seen the movie. They did such a good job with that. Yeah, and we were able to give her fun facts about it that made her love the performance more. But we didn't need to explain the performance. They She knew automatically, which means anybody else that doesn't know Deadpool doesn't need it explained mm -hmm. and they didn't explain it like they, yeah their use of props was so genius that whole thing that that chan did in the middle where he broke that for fourth wall he talked to us he raised the little toy thing up to show a huge tank in the background like i thought that was so cool it was so well done it was just really fun and then i mino came in and killed it at the beginning like just like just came in like balls to the wall like did not hold back anything and like that's something i haven't seen exactly of him from before i saw it after he performed with ats and i'm not saying it's because of ats i'm definitely saying though it's like when you're around people that kind of really like hype you up you are going to like pick up some stuff from them and i definitely do think that he was able to get better by performing with different kinds of people. And Singman found like such confidence that I hadn't seen before and it was amazing. I really liked the production of it. Uh, the actual like composition of it. That's that's what I expected Three Ratchet to sound like. That's what I expected their creative minds to sound like. And it was really nice to actually get to see it. The rice cooker killed me. Like <laughs> I, I saw cooker. the because there was like a scene in Deadpool in the second one, I believe, where he had like this huge chimichanga that he was like like I don't know what he was doing, but he was on the huge chimichanga. Do you not remember? And it was so funny that they changed it to be like an a, an offensive Asian thing. You know what I'm talking about? But it was they got to make the joke. Yeah, because they're Asian. So I thought that was hilarious. I was just like, Ooh. yeah. Um, Chongbin and Jisung, rap god, amazing. Chongbin rap god. That's all I gotta say. Chongbin it, rap god. Chongbin rap god. It was so good like that is like western like flow like he did so good we're really big fans of of rap in general and so like we love rap and so listening to Changbin just kill it like he was unleashed that was no limit like he genuine that was like he has been great this entire like season but like this, episode. this one was so good and you could tell like they had a lot more hands-on on it they got to pick what they were dancing they got to pick with the, the theme they got to change the music the way that they wanted to it felt very shout out to ji sung you did really great honey oh no he did amazing like he should stick to what he's really good at and i'm not saying that he's a bad singer i just saying he's a stronger rapper i think he's their ace i'm not gonna lie he can dance, he can sing, he can rap, he can perform. And he my, can just, tap dance all the way into my heart. And that's, that's the thing that I personally don't like about yeah. certain K-pop groups where you have such great like singers or such great dancers and then you have people who are just there. And you need to make sure. And the thing is, 
when you're part of a group, you are only as strong as your weakest link. So if your weakest link is just a dancer, make sure they are the best dancer that they are. And the thing is, Stray Kids has that one thing that I don't really like, where their weakest link doesn't really have, like, a lot to say. Like, I'm sad to say it, but they're really, really strong individual tools, but they still haven't gotten to the point where everyone has something to shine at. And that's also a complaint that I'm going to have about... I tease. I, I, I hate to... I, yeah? We'll talk later. We'll talk later, <laughs> but, like, that's... <laughs> I love, you know how much I love them, but like, no, like they're, I think this was one of their best performances, but the only complaint that I had was that they, what's his name? Which one? The baby? The baby. Jongin. Yeah. Where they, they put him in the back and I was just like, did you do that because he was afraid to do it because of last week or did you do that because you didn't want him to be in it? Did you not trust him? Yeah. And that's my thing. My thing is, I think the best thing they could have done for him was given him a part to let him shine so he could make up for himself what was done. Because again, as we've said before, I don't think last week was Jongin's fault. But he definitely took it so hard, hard the poor baby. And I'm just like, he should have gotten something. To that redeem redeemed. himself. Yeah. yeah. And it, that but was... not for us, for himself. Yeah. Yes. And that was my one and only complaint. It was one of the strongest, I believe performances of the entire season i think it blew out so many other ones out of the water like it was just so good like so freaking good but that's one of my biggest complaints that i think i'm gonna further see getting more into stray kids where yes you have really good parts and tools but not all of them are polished yeah yeah actually i'm I'm with you on that but overall this was a really really yeah oh my god it was it was so good i think it was one of my favorites 10 out of 5 like so good yep i i would give it a 5 out of 5 yeah yeah i'm i'm excited to see how they're going to end this competition oh my god yeah with (laughs) yajit you good oh (laughs) you can't edit that out you have to make it louder and stronger i i don't i don't know how they're gonna beat this like i hope that they will but i don't know how they're going to (laughs) hyunjin Hyunjin. Hyunjin. No, you know how they'll win? <laughs> they do Slump. <laughs> what could you imagine? Stop. Slump is my all-time favorite song. Like, it is the best freaking song I've ever heard in my life. Like, I'm so obsessed with it. Yeah, they need... I mean, I'm excited to see how they're, what they're going to do. Because they <coughs> they ended this episode, like, their, their rounds of this episode on a very, very high note. So, it's going to be interesting to see what they how they end. How they close it out. Finish I off agree. strong, honey. I Finish agree. off strong. Like, like, take everything that you've learned. You've learned what from works. Us. <laughs> <laughs> no, take what you've learned. Take what you've seen works and go out with a freaking bang. And then give me a comeback. Yes. What are we excited for? What we hope to see out of them. Okay. I hope to see Stray Kids riding this high and finishing this off with a huge bang. And I hope to see Icon take it a little bit more seriously and just really apply themselves. Like everybody apply themselves. And if you're not going to apply yourself to be serious, then apply yourself to be goofy as well. You know, like just give me that performance that I know they can give me. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, I think I have fallen in love with Icon as people. Oh my God. Yes. And I have re-fallen in love with Stray Kids all over again. I just think they're sweethearts. All of them give each other a run for their money. Like, I want to sit there and be like, I don't know who should win. Yeah. Because that's what it should be. I don't want there to be a clear winner because that's no fun. Yeah. I want to, like, if anybody wins, I want to be upset about something. You know what I mean? Like, I want all of them to be like, oh, well, you know, I think they should, well, no, you know? Yeah. You want to be at, like, odds with yourself as to who should have won. But I also want to be... I want whoever to win to have earned it. Yes. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so far, again, obviously, Kingdom Legendary War has some flaws. The the show itself. But we are entertained, are we not? Very entertained. Yeah. So, we will continue to watch. We're going to be watching the next episode, probably either Friday or Saturday night, again, after it comes out. We will probably split the next episode like talking into two where we will break down again two and two teams because we're already at almost we're over two hours right now which i will hopefully be able to 
get down a little bit but um we're we'll definitely split it into two more and then we'll probably do one final episode maybe two more when the last episode comes out we'll we'll see we'll see how they wind up breaking up the rest of the episodes and then we'll follow suit Agreed. so oh god hello mikey but yeah anything else no i think that's it and i'm really excited to see the end of kingdom really excited to see all of the groups and um, hope you guys stick with us and um yeah just leave some comments down below and have a discussion with us we're totally open for that yeah so our podcasts are going to stay kingdom related for now until the show is over but then once kingdom is over we will actually probably venture back into what our podcasts were going to be when we started everything last year where we actually want to talk about comebacks and rank and roast outfits and and all that kind of stuff and just kind of be a little more silly um and just have some fun um so be on the lookout for that if you are interested exactly and please like and subscribe yes again thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye bye